Yay. So welcome, everybody. This is our Starshot AMA for June 20th, 2024. Uh, I'm terribly sorry for announcing the date wrong in certain places. Um, and then right at other places, it was confusing. So I fixed it a few hours ago and then try to post the news everywhere. So I kind of flooded a lot of channels and social media. So I'm I'm happy that all of you found your way here at the end. We'll also post the recording later um, as well. And so we've been up to a few things, I think, recently that we haven't talked too much about. Um, so one of the things I guess that I can show is that uh, Pam posted the Starshot work tracks, the ones that we have, we've defined so far. And so we are working on figuring out how exactly to set up leadership for these and how to support them best. But there's a lot of ideation happening. Like if you go in here, there's a lot of ideation happening of how this should be done. So there's discussions on what we've done before. Um, so you're feel free to post more comments on this. I will send it to chat as well. Oop. To the right audience. Yes. And so we'll post more of these and we'll also work on how to set up the teams that work on this. So um, that should get started very soon, but there's these are the initial things that we would like to work on. And this week, I think we worked a lot on, discussed a lot about the installer, both the UX side and the technology side. And we'll keep looking at that more later, but I, I was personally surprised about the amount of about the amount of attention that we should or that the installer needs to fulfill the mission that we set out for Starshot. So that's going to be interesting for sure. And then next week we will not be uh we'll not be having online meetings. We'll be some of us will be at Dev Days. So Christina and Larry and myself you'll find us at Dev Days and I hope to meet some of you there, and we have swag for Dev Days. Multiple swags for Dev Days. So these are Lego kits with different recipes that you can use to put them together. And then there's also DIY options if you don't like the recipes that ship with this Lego kit. So um yeah, and we have uh, Star Shots uh, stickers and we have Drupal 11 stickers. So there's a lot of cool stuff for next week, but we also have sessions on the new navigation module and Star Shot, and um, we'll be able to learn a lot more and work with us on different things. Uh, the Drupal AI team will also be there and we'll discuss a lot about how to best use AI in Star Shot. So there's a lot of exciting things that are coming up next week. Any updates that Larry, Pam, or Christina would share with us? I had my experience builder webinar just two days ago, so there's not much to update from the last two days. I heard that you're creating videos about experience builder that clarify how, how it works and what's the architecture. Yeah, we're pretty focused on uh, filling the issue queue with as much information as we have currently. So that includes fighting issues and posting videos to things that are a little bit more complicated to to explain uh, so that uh, we can include the uh, explanations with some visual guides as well. So yeah, that's definitely something that, uh, that the initiative is pretty busy with right now. We also opened a new Slack channel that it's called Starshot UX Marketing. Um, the goal behind that is to try to have any conversation related to marketing or US or, uh, UX over there. 
And if you're interested in that, please uh, join the channel. We're also going to try to start uh, sending a form to gather. Uh, we'll send that to the people that already uh, pledged uh, that they were going to help uh, with UX related stuff to the people uh, that already said that they could help. Uh, with a few answers to see a little bit more uh, how they could help, which uh, fields they could help with, and how much time they would be available. So if you would like to be on that uh, bunch of uh, people who are going to send a message, be sure that you have uh, that field. Yeah, either fill there that on the, the, the form that you filled a while back or be aware be connected into the uh, inside the Starshot UX marketing channel uh, in Slack because we are also going to post that in there. Where our goal is to try to organize all the work around the UX side of things, user tests, user res uh, user uh, UX research, and wireframe creation. We need help on all, all these sites, and we will try to set up uh, some kind of. Um, working group around all this so if you are interested if you know somebody somebody interested or your company can fund somebody uh be aware that we're going to try to reach people in the next days great Ben, do you want to add something well i was going to say about the ux form uh <laughs> <laughs> i think also just um the other thing we've decided to progress is we're going to do another round of wire well christina is going to do another <laughs> an, uh, kind of draft round of wireframes for the installer because we're um we're kind of gearing up to get that work started so since the dries note wireframes we've kind of defined a few things a little bit more and had more conversations and obviously had a lot of feedback from um from the community as well on drupal.org so we're going to give that another shot um obviously still there will be plenty of um, refinement and work and and testing and research and all of that, but um, but it's good to um, it's good to be progressing that one too. All right, that leads to one of the pre-submitted questions on Slack that we got an hour ago, I think. Um, and I should probably save the name of who's asked it because that would be only polite. Um. No, that was not from just two hours ago, but the previous round. Do, do, do. There you are. So Rico asked, um, I'm curious to understand the workflow post-experimentation. As I understand it, you can check out Starshot in your browser and play around there. But what happens if the user is keen to take the next step? What's the journey from experimentation to production expected to look like? That's a good one. So that's one of the things that we've been talking about this week when we were looking at the installer uh, mocks. Because what we want people to be able to do is experiment in the browser without installing anything locally. And Drupal used to have a solution for this in terms of running Drupal with WebAssembly in the browser without installing anything locally. And then WordPress made it way better. So if you look at WordPress Playground, it's amazing. And so you would like to uh, take back innovation there, I guess, and uh, do something that's, um, that's similar um, so that you can run Drupal in the browser without installing anything locally. And there, it doesn't really make sense to get you through an installer in terms of like set your database credentials or whatever, because you, you have everything pre-configured in your WebAssembly container. So we'll need a workflow to export your site from that WebAssembly container and take it to uh, hosting platforms. I think that ideally there would be some kind of API that we can, like the Drupal Association can maybe make money of selling um, that you are exporting from here to whatever hosting provider and that whatever hosting providers would be Drupal Association partners that can take the site and plop them up immediately on their hosting. Uh, that would be the easiest because 
and you wouldn't need to go through a potentially tedious hosting signup once you exported the site from the web container. But I think uh, this raises a lot of questions in terms of how hosting happens for Drupal sites and how we can make that easier, not just the boarding between the browser to the hosting, but also the hosting in general. So I think it's great that we are asking those questions now because that's been a problem for a long time. And we have this project now that focuses on, on also solving those questions. Yeah, some of the discussions that we had yesterday, uh, talking on the installer, I think they kind of applying here a little bit because we're saying, okay, if one of the goals, at least in one of the workflows uh, that we're envisioning is like the person that is going to try Drupal and don't want to choose a lot of things at the beginning, how can we make assumptions during this process that later don't create problems for us because we might want to actually ask for an email anyway, or ask for a, um, for a username or all these things. If we want to avoid asking too many questions at the beginning to make it easier at the beginning, then we might have troubles afterwards if we want to export things. So we need to be sure on each workflow what we are asking to actually make sure that we are not missing information later on, like this other workflow, like exporting everything later. So everything is related. Yeah, um, the next question that was pre-submitted was ties in here, right in here. So that's why I asked. So uh, Vidorado asked um, that they would like to comment about the traditional developer workflow and configuration syncing between environments. So once you have it in an environment somewhere, uh, it was mentioned in a previous Starshot session that it is not yet clear for them. Um, more or less, if they get it correctly, then we will have two paradigms, the traditional workflow for big projects and a new workflow for small projects where all config is made in production. Can these two workflows, uh, are, are, they, are they separate or can they be mixed uh, where the customer makes things in production, but also as a developer want to take some version control of things? Uh, somebody mentioned automatic config export, but they don't get how it could be committed or pushed to a project repo if that is the intention. I would uh, say, I think people are already using the just change it in production workflow, right? You don't have to use, um, you know, you don't have to store your configuration in code. I'm sure there are plenty of Drupal sites that don't deploy configuration. So I don't necessarily see this as a change. I think it's just up to you whether you want to use the sort of new one or not. Uh, that would be my simple answer. Laurie, and what were you going to say? I was going to gonna just add that we are also looking into adding some of those, those capabilities that you can today get only when you are exporting your config so that you could uh, accomplish some of those things uh, even when using the built-in production mode. So for example, if we want to be, if you want to move configuration from environment to another, you would generally use the Git-based approach today. Some of those things could be made more simpler in that built-in production workflow. Or, for example, with the experience builder, where we are looking into uh, theme building. Um, so, for example, maybe the theme builder is not going to write directly to the code base, but there should be still a way to save it as a theme so that you can use it in another Drupal instance later on. So the workflow will be different for, for that scenario, but we are we are looking into sort of the key user journeys in there so that we can enable some of the, the things that users are trying to accomplish. Yeah, so there's there's improvements that could happen there. And I think the auto config uh, export was mentioned in the context of automatic updates, which is a misleading name, I think, because that also includes our package UI. So uh, the package or APIs for the package UIs basically. So um, so that has a possibility for integrating with development workflows so that you can build extensions to package manager, which is our package API in automatic updates that interact with your Git repository for, for managing your code base in Git. So when you do something 
on the on the UI with uh, project browser or automatic updates, then it could make commits to your Git repository as well, or do automated config exports, or do side backups with backup and migrate module, or a bunch of other things. And uh, Ted Bowman opened the automatic updates extras project on Drupal.org, which I will link that are um, that are about building some of those things. Um, once again, that's sort of a misleading name because that also applies to what you do with Project Browser um, and all the other things that you do with the package management API. But so even though there's currently workflows um, for, um, for um, supporting this and people already do life changes and they manage this, then we are looking at improving them in all of these ways that are mentioned. So, all right. Um, so I will still ask from the chat, even though I see you have stuff in a QA, and a we'll get there. So the other day I mentioned that Larry had interviewed people who work with low code. Um, and Oscar, Oscar Alvo would like to ask if these people were only individuals who had worked with Drupal, or if the survey has also conducted with people who work with WordPress, Acquia DXP, or another low-code CMS to understand how they work and what they see as the strengths and weaknesses of their tools. Uh, yeah, so the first pool of users that I interviewed was, was focused around users who have used Drupal in the past. But even within that pool, there was a, a sizable uh, proportion of people who have what are using actively other systems that are side by side with Drupal or have moved to using other systems like uh, WordPress with Gutenberg or Builder.io or, or Repflow. So that was already, uh, there, was, there was a lot of insights coming in about uh, competing products as part of that uh, pool of interviews. And then later on, we conducted another round of interview, interviews specifically targeted at WordPress users. Uh, because of uh, we were considering Gutenberg as one of the uh, sort of foundational solu foundational solutions to build on top of the experience builder. So we wanted to better understand sort of what their users think about that product, what what works about it, what doesn't work, and so on. So we would have more insights to that. So we did interview specifically with WordPress users as as well. It was actually interesting with that WordPress pool of users. It was interesting that. Uh, quite a few of those users had used Drupal at some point uh, in the past, um, most likely during the Drupal 7 li uh, life cycle. And then they kind of figured that Drupal got a little bit complicated for them and they kind of jumped the ship. That's a perfect segue to our next question. Um, so James Shields asks that, uh, I think that one of the things that made Drupal great up to Drupal 7 was the way it was easy for our students and hobbyists to download a zip or a tar file and put it on a cheap hosting plan. Do you think it would be possible to package everything needed for Starshot in a package that could be loaded onto a host in a way that it's easy for hobbyist users and have Composer take over with automatic updates and project browser? I don't know if this is possible today, but that's kind of, that's part of the ambition of Starshot is to make that possible and make this reality. So this is definitely what we are uh, aiming to enable with, with Drupal Starshot. Yeah, I think like the workflow that we talked about, if you try it out in the browser, then you'll get, a, you can export the thing that you got at the end. And that will be a tarball or a zip file. And that's that, that created out of the Composer um, Composer, um, the results of Composer that we did, and that will allow the system to use automatic updates and project browser on top of that going forward, because that's just how Composer put it together and you'll be able to use that. So that's the idea. Yes. The other question about the code base is from Jürgen Haas. So Dries mentioned a couple of times that the code base of, uh, Starshot and core could be separate for the time being to be merged again later. That sounds worrisome at this merge usually never happens and we may end up maintaining two code bases. Is that really the plan or can this be avoided? 
Well, it wouldn't be too, I mean, it, it's not going to be two separate versions of the same code. So it'll be Drupal core with Starshot add-ons. So I think, I mean, so you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but they will be separate for the time being, I think, because the core process is established and conservative for good reason. And the idea is to make this one a little bit um, a little bit quicker, a little bit more, um, you know, able to innovate more quickly. So I think it it should be separate. And um, I th I think what the implication is is that there would be some type of a fork, but it's not really maintaining it. Yeah, it's it's not like we're going to duplicate core and then make changes. Um, if we need changes in core, those will be done as core issues and committed to core. And the Starshot code will be um, separate but different. <laughs> So far, I, I think the discussion has been that we are avoiding to write too much code in the Starshot code base. Like it's mainly going to be recipes and and composer JSON to include uh, modules. But there could be a need for writing code in terms of like facilitating sort of the download of the modules or running the the recipes. So I don't think there is a commitment that there, there's not going to be any code in the Starshot repository. But if there is code, that is going to be something that is on top of Drupal core not sort of diverging from it. Yeah, yeah, eventually if there are things that are improving core in some ways, I, we need to define still how we're going to make this possible, but I'm sure there might be things that might improve core itself. And probably he was like men mentioning that on that sense that whatever we improvements we make, we still need to define how, but eventually some of these improvements should then land into core eventually. Yeah, we'll the way work in the, process. Go ahead. Yeah, the way I explained it in my Drupal 11 session in uh, Portland is that uh, we have core and we have these components on top, like automatic update slash package manager that allows us to install packages um, on the site and keep them up to date. And we have project browser that allows you to find the things to install with automatic updates and package manager. So now you found the things that you can install and there's some recipes on top, which helps you configure the things that you could find. So now you have a way to provide these pre-configured things with use case specific stuff and more general things in recipes. And we're also building experience builder to support UI based customization, but these are all sitting on top of core. And so as soon as all of the infrastructure to support basically assembling Starshot just using core is in core, then there's a possibility that there's no need for a separate package. Uh, we may still want to use, like have some kind of marketing around that or something else, but there's a possibility in the future that maybe all the infrastructure to enable to assemble this experience is already in core and you make the selection of Starshot or not Starshot in the part as part of the installing Drupal itself is when you when you are installing Drupal, you are making this choice of do I want a developer persona thing or do I want a site builder persona thing? And that's where that happens. Um all right. Um so next question as from a chat. Uh, are you seeing much evidence of mobilization of volunteers? Is it happening more in specific areas and projects? Are there examples where volunteers are not being mobilized because you're still working on leadership roles? I would say there are lots of examples where volunteers are not being mobilized. I think we're still in the planning phase for a lot of this. So um, I think there's lots and lots of evidence of the volunteer interest, which um, Gabor can speak to with the spreadsheet of 600 plus people who have committed to helping. But um, we definitely still are in the mobilization and sort of definition phase. And so getting involved at the moment is tricky if you're not already super familiar with core contribution or just general contribution. And Sai, who asked the question, I know is and has been actually helping and gotten super involved in Project Browser, which is awesome to see. Um, but it's a very good point <laughs> and I suspect comes from you noticing that um, 
that that sort of seems to be happening. We definitely have a lot to do and it, um, you know, the, the, t the clock is ticking, but I do think that we're um, making really good progress on that side of things. So hope, definitely hoping to get that mobilization happening very, very soon. Yeah, on the experience builder, we've also started seeing uh, volunteers mobilizing on individual issues now that we've actually been able to get more information about what needs to be done in the issue queue. So for example, uh, we are working towards a demo in DrupalCon Barcelona. So we want to uh, showcase the uh, refreshed user experience. Uh, in order to, to do that, we need to build a design system. And some folks from uh, Salsa Digital have stepped up and they are planning to own the uh, building of the of the of that design system. So there's there's definitely evidence that once we actually get the work out there, that there are folks who are willing to step up and own that. I think another part where we've definitely seen folks uh, mobilizing the work is the marketing side of things. Uh, so for example, uh, Dallas has been doing awesome job at uh, promoting the different initiatives uh, in various social media and and Slack and all of that. So uh, we definitely have. Uh, examples of like once we get the tangible things that can be worked on by someone that people step up and then uh, take the ownership of that work. So, um, I, and I think it's been, it's been actually, um, I've been surprised how smooth it has been so far on those issues. Like it has been almost immediate that once we, you know, once something becomes clear enough that someone just steps up and says, okay, I'm, I'm going to take this. Uh, same happened with the installer where we are working with, with Palantir. Uh, for them to, to take a large part of ownership on that. So definitely yeah, still areas to, to be involved with the work tracks and, and all, but uh, I think we are making good progress. Yeah. One of the things that worked the best uh, so far, and I, I because a lot of people reach out and I keep saying to people, because definitely there is a lot of interest the thing is that there are not that many action of easy actionable uh, items uh, yet is that if you have a team of people that can work that's usually the best thing uh, it's not um, that individuals by themselves they can't help because they can but the moment that you have a team that have different skills that can work together that is really great because one can support the other and that's the, the great thing about being able to take on a part of a, one of the process one of the tracks or one of the things and you can review each other work you can support each other and that's one of the piece uh that helps the most if you come as a pack not as a pack but as a as a group of people that can help that's really that's really really helpful because we can rely on not getting the work blocked by, let's say, if somebody has time to review other people's work. And that's really usually super helpful. Uh, great. Um, so, Dallas, let's, let's go on to his questions because they're great. Um, so recently, Larry shared an experience builder positioning document. Uh, the sooner Promote Drupal can use these to craft the story for ambitious site builders, the better. Do the other initiatives have a similar document or are the initiative leads the best to communicate with to help establish these? So I think the plan at the moment is that we might not have this type of document available for each individual initiative, but what we are planning to do is to have a unified uh, positioning uh, statement for the Starshot itself. And that's something that we are actively working on right now. So we are working on the sort of high level product strategy first for, for Drupal Starshot. And then once we have established that product strategy, we are going to, to craft that uh, more um, uh, tactical positioning statements for that that can be then used by the marketing efforts. Um, I think the plan at the moment is that we should be done with the uh, product strategy in the next uh, two, three weeks. And then after that, we start crafting the, the positioning statements. And that should be something that we are able to share in uh, in July. And I, I think that also also that we are we're happy to collaborate on that with the marketing folks so that we might might do an initial draft on that or um but or or or, or something else where we can collaborate with the with the folks involved on that. So it doesn't have to be 
only something that we or the leadership team works on. Cool, thank you. Yeah, I think related to that from also from Dallas is for a fun community inspiration, can Gabor, Larry, Christina, and Penn take a quick take on a brief Starshot slogan slash tagline? Can we get like 10 minutes to think about it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's get back to that later. Yeah. Um, all right. So there's a technical question for um, from Tony. Uh, as far as I understand, recipes can only contain config. How does connecting recipes to code, for example, template styles and hooks, look in Starshot? Yeah. Well, Lowry, you want to take that? Uh, so I think how it, how it is enabled right now in recipes is that recipes can establish dependencies on, on other things. So they can download a module or they could uh, potentially even download um, SDC uh, component. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if all of that infrastructure exists today. But um, as far as I understand, that's the idea of how we would be enabling uh, capabilities like that with the recipes. Yeah, I don't think you can download modules just yet, but that's obviously in the roadmap. And I, I think like the answer is basically by having a recipe that enables a, a custom module or a contra module is probably the really short answer. But um, for Starshot itself, I think um, Laurie or Gabor was saying that there might be some, there basically there might be like a Starshot custom module that does some things that are to be determined, but Yes, it's true that recipes are only config. Yeah, I think so. I think I would plug uh, Chris Vanderwater's observation here that I didn't realize uh, last month that recipes will also increase the themability of Drupal. At least we expect them to do because once more people use the similar or same recipes to do things, like if the event recipe that people use will have a well-known event content type name and will have well-known display modes, et cetera, et cetera. Then theming for those content type names and display modes, et cetera, will be much easier and sharing those um, visual customizations or solutions will be easier because they would be based on a similar data structure across different Drupal sites. So we hope that that could be a thing that helps uh, with customizing the look and feel of Drupal and sharing those customizations in the future as well. So you may, you may not need to share your own template there for certain cases. Um, duh, duh, duh. All right. Um, so once a user selects the, I guess, uh, use case specific site template and generates a site in the browser, can they access it indefinitely or will it be available only for a specific period? I think that it's important to make note of the fact that the Drupal in the browser that you have access to, other people don't have access to, so it's not a public hosting service. So that's only available to you on your computer. It's running in your browser. Um, so if you want to make that available and access it later, then you'll need to export it and put it somewhere that to make it accessible. Hopefully, we'll have a way to, not this year, but sometime in the future, we'll hopefully have a way to export it directly to hosting providers um, in a very easy way. Um, there's a community project called Drupal Forge that are trying to make that possible. I will post a link to that in chat as well. to have an easy on-ramp to hosting providers. That's not necessarily the solution to this problem, but it could be a solution if it works out. All right, next one. Uh, can we select a particular branch or release tag in Project Browser while installing a module? Reason for this, suppose any module maintainer not release new version to the module with issue fixes. I I think, I mean, I watched the project browser um, webinar and I mean, I think that 
the answer is probably for now, no, because the audience for Project Browser is folks that wouldn't know what that means. And so rather than exposing that, which is sort of a developer thing to people who don't know what it means, if you're a developer, you should, or not you should, but you probably would use Composer. So if you, if you want a specific version, you should use um, Composer on the command line to get it. And um, yeah, sort of, I guess, leave Project Browser for the um, for the folks who don't want to worry about that. <laughs> for now, anyway. Maybe there will be a maybe there will be a um, beginner and advanced mode or something in the future. <laughs> yeah, there. I mean, Project Browser is interacting with the same Composer um, code base and Composer setup that you have for your site that you could interact with on the command line. So if you need to have advanced features, that you can use that on the command line. If you want to do it on the UI, you can do it with Project Browser. It will change the same. Composer setup, it will work with the same vendor directory, all the things. Um, so I think there's both ways are supported. We are not taking away features. We are making it easier to do the most common things. No. Um... Somebody asks if there would be possible to create good DDEF plugins to make contributing easier. That's in relation to the mobilization question before is, would that help with getting more people involved? I do think that that would help. I know that there's been some efforts to that historically. Uh, for example, Sally, <clears throat> Sally worked on something like that uh, in uh, DrupalCon. Prague, okay, TripleCon Lil, sorry. Uh, mixing up the years. Um, so yeah, I, I do think that, that there would be value in, the, in something like that because it is still more challenging to set up the contribution environment than what it ideally could be. All right. Yeah, I've seen uh, a lot of people are struggling. Yeah, I was just going. To, I was just going to say that there. I've seen a lot of people struggling, like setting up their logos, and that could help tremendously. Actually, like for any contribution in Spring, and then, uh, or anybody that wants to contribute from home, and especially there for a country, or like clear instructions and clear documentation for that. It's like it's key. I'm pretty sure of all this. It's really useful. Yeah, we don't currently have uh, the anything in the repo for Starshot itself, so we're working on all of the dependencies, uh, such as Project Browser and uh, Experience Builder, etc. cetera. Uh, but once we have code there, we'll need to work on the instructions and making it clear on how you can contribute directly to that code base. Uh, but we don't yet have that code base, so that's a reason we don't have documentation for that. But that's an area we need to improve. Um, all right, so we are running out of questions. So if you have any more, then please do. In the meantime, do do, do any of you have your taglines yet? I've seen the Kristen, AI taglines from Kristen in chat. Kristen, They're yeah, great. posted chat GPT ones. I'm not, I'm not, maybe if we try to merge these together. I like the launching, but I'm just not really sure where to take that. Launching your vision beyond limits. Sounds a little scary. Igniting, Igniting ambitious, ambitious website. Right, <laughs> it's like so corporate jargony. It's so AI. Um, propel your site to the cosmos where dreams orbit success. Holy moly. It would be better to, to success to orbit dreams, I think. <laughs> I actually the like dreams, Dallas is the most. Dreams will be far away orbiting in space. That's not that good. I like Dallas's star shot for the next generation of web builders everywhere. With the hand up. Yeah. Greg. Greg. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, I'm just too lazy to type. Uh, so have we, I know that there's certain, uh, contribution, um, uh, sections that, that any, almost anyone can do like the documentation of stuff, but have we broken uh, and I know that this depends on, on, uh, like for the experience builder on the fact that whether we decided what technology we're going to use, but 
have we broken it down to uh, what skills are required so that people have an entry point? Like, um, you know, uh, if you want to help with this, you need experience or we need people with experience that they can do that. Or the other way around, if someone has experience with a certain thing, they want to contribute to the whole Starshot initiative, they can state what they're experienced with and then that maps them to the, the sub initiatives. Have we sort of like started doing anything like that? Yeah, we don't have a, like a mapping tool or anything automated, but the tracks that we've been writing out have skills required and blockers dependencies and those kind of things. Um, so we are, and we also we have, have we also have the spreadsheet which um, the the original call for people to commit, and that also asked about the skill set. So, right. um, for example, we're using that to reach out to folks who said they had UX experience to send them the survey. So already using that to corral people. And um, the the Drupal certified partner stream as well has the, the partners who've offered help have said obviously what areas they're looking that they have availability for. So we're also trying to kind of match that, um, I guess, but that's all at a higher level. So I'm not sure if you meant more specifically like, you know, issue by issue. No, not specifically. It's just that that's the higher level. But uh, one one thing in particular, uh, if people from uh, either individuals or different agencies that have already um, created sort of like experience builders, like the 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 various like the uh, Mercury editor that 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 Atten has and and uh, Site Factory that I sort of like a committee of these people that are experienced with with. Uh, products that have already been in use that resemble what we're trying to achieve. Sort of like a committee of these people that already have experience with, with such uh, things. Um, there's a, a current member, it's one of the tutorial um, um, providing agencies. I can't remember which one it is now that has a, a short five minute, uh, minute video that, that lists at least four or five solutions out there. Uh, I can't remember which one it is now. So, so sort of like gathering these people together and at least hearing them out because they have also implementation experience um, that, you know, might speed things up. Like, you know, oh, we've tried that and didn't work for, for, for this, this, and that reason, uh, that sort of thing. I saw Gabor shaking his head, nodding. Yeah, I, I expected Larry to take this on because he's working on this area. Okay. Fair but enough. I've seen, at, so for myself, I've at least seen uh, people that, have been working heavily with layout builder that are involved with experience builder and also the people of UI suite that are also um, working around experience builder. So at least those two ecosystems have found like found matches within experience builder. But I, yeah, I, that's, we've totally seen that there's all of those different ecosystems and that's part of the problem that we are trying to solve. Right. And last thing, not, not so much of a question, maybe a question will come out of it is, uh, uh, I think it was yesterday or the other day uh, where there was a spreadsheet with the four things that we evaluated. One of them was the layout builder. The other one was the paragraphs, uh, plasmic. And then I forget what the other one was. And it was very useful because it had all these green and red areas, like what things are hard and what are um, uh, easy to do with those things. I was hoping that we, we, well, it looks like from me, from the discussion, it looked to me that we're probably going to try to build a hybrid of whatever layouts and paragraphs are offering because they're the lowest. Like it's sort of like it was sad because there's there's efforts that and, and time that was uh, uh, put into these open source projects, be it Plasmic or you know Atom Design, Mercury comes to mind. That and it seemed to me from the summary that we we do not have a pathway to to build on on what they've already built. It seems that we all have to make mold layout builder and paragraphs into something like that instead. Um, did I understand that correctly from um, discussion? Yeah, so we basically were able to rule out all of the external solutions. And uh, as, as a consequence, it sort of came a discussion around, so we have layout builder and paragraphs left. And what do we do about those? And that's kind of the path that we are on at the moment. It's trying to craft something out of those two solutions into one. Mm -hmm. um, 
but the large, uh, even even there, to large extent, it does mean that we have to redefine because of um, so how layer builder and paragraphs how how they have come around is is to large extent they've looked at what exists in Drupal and they've tried to build something on top of that, and then you run into limitations that hurt back on the user experience or set limitations in terms of what you can achieve with the experience builder. So what we are trying to do with the experience builder is we are starting with the user experience and sort of the requirements of what kinds of design systems you have to be able to build with it. And then we are looking at the sort of foundations in Drupal and, and making changes to those in order to enable the experience that, that is required instead of looking at what exists there and building on just on top of that. Right. <clears throat> yeah, thanks. Another technical question uh, that James Shields sent. Uh, is there a danger that we are going to end up with a plethora of JS frameworks in the solution? Project Browser is using Swelt. I've heard talk of experience builder using React. Should there be an effort to have one framework for the key parts of Starship? Yeah, I think that is one of the compromises we are looking at right now, which is that there we might be having to use uh, multiple JS frameworks um, across different products, and uh, it is it is definitely some a downside that we have realized. But at the same time, if we look at alternatives, it seems like it's still the least bad of the the, the possible solutions that exist there. Um, Swelt would not be able to accelerate the the build of the experience builder to the same extent as what React is because of React has a much larger uh, community of of libraries and uh, there, there's a broader group of people who have uh, who, who have experience building things like this with it. Um, so we're able to leverage a lot of that knowledge if we build experience builder with React. Um, so yeah, there is the, there's downsides with that. And uh, at the moment, given that we are trying to get something done uh, sooner rather than later, uh, it was the solution that would accelerate the process the most, and that's why. We decided to go with that. All right. Any more questions, or should we get to our slogan? Going once, going twice. All right. Uh, I mean, I would put in a something that's more insider looking. That's so the. It's not good for publishing as a slogan, but what I've heard from a lot of people when I was talking about Starshot is that Drupal is going back to its roots, which is the total opposite of reaching for the stars, right? <laughs> um, because, uh, because the, I mean, it's uh, so a lot of people got excited because a lot of us got involved with Drupal because it made it super easy for us to click together something to get to the 80% very fast. And then it was easy. It was also easy to customize it from there. Um, so it was easy with the Lego bricks to get to the 80% and then to customize it from there. Um, and so um, a lot of people that are in the community, they are excited because they feel like we're going back to our roots by at the same time going beyond limits. So that's what I would submit for an internal, I guess, Feeling check. I think you could say back to back to its roots and into the future. You know, you can because we're really doing both. I was gonna say something cheesy like Starshot, your launch pad to a digital future or something like that. And then Laurie has uh, yeah. Starshot. I posted mine in the in the chats. Starshot makes Drupal the gold standard for site builders and marketers looking to establish a presence on the web. Uh, so that comes from the idea where if you go to talk to just a, a random marketer or or site builder from the street, like they would probably talk to you about Webflow or or WordPress or some other competing tool. And uh, so I'm looking at Drupal Starshot is how can we make it so that if you go talk to a marketer or site builder that Drupal is the, the solution that they aspire to be able to use. And I think that's that kind of goes back to the going back to our roots because of if we go to the go back to the Drupal seven times, uh Drupal used to be 
the, the solution back then that everyone aspired to use. It used to be that the cool kid on the on the on the streets. So uh, now we just need to figure out how to how to go back to those roots and make it happen again. How to how to make Drupal the cool kid again. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think we should um, forget about uh, one of the strong points or strong parts that we have at Drupal, which is actually making really complex uh, things. So I think I wouldn't say that in English. I would be way more comfortable saying that in Spanish or Catalan, especially. So, and, it's, and I really don't, I'm more an images person rather than a. <laughs> worse person so I could draw something instead of speaking but if I had to put the emphasis on a concept it could be that we still can create amazing experiences and really complex experiences and still provide the same that we've been providing so far plus all the new things that are coming and all the really good things that are coming with uh, providing to the new uh, set of easier solutions that we can give. Yeah, Akhil from Salsa su submitted. Yeah, that's a good one. It's not rocket science anymore. <laughs> it's also <laughs> insider, but I like it. If you know, you very know. Insider, but it's <laughs> the, the, the variation, I'm just thinking is that Drupal's not rocket science anymore. Is what we yeah, I like that. I posted an alternative. It's a good one. Yeah, nice, nice and brief. All right, well, um, thanks everybody for coming. We'll post the recording of this when Zoom gives it to us and we can put it on YouTube, et cetera. So it will be within a day usually. Um, so let's keep talking. Let's meet some of you next week at Dev Days. Uh, Christina, Larry, and myself will be there. We'll have sessions. We'll do a lot of work on Starshot. We have Starshot swag. Um, so be there. Uh, if you can't be there, then we'll get what we can record it and we'll post that online as well. Later, our sessions uh, from Dev Days will be posted online and we'll probably be back with uh, online Starship sessions the week after. So thanks everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks thanks. everybody. Thanks all. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks guys.